going to get warm and fuzzy. All right, so we have from far places been drawn together this day to witness and to commemorate with Tracy and Judith their union for the founding among us a new home. So let us reverence this hour by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable and it keeps no record of when it has been wronged. It's never glad about injustice but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Love will last forever. There are three things that will endure, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. In the Song of Solomon, we read, Set me a seal, set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is stronger than death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath the most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would be utterly contempt. We're gathered together in the presence of God and in this community to join this man and this woman in Christian marriage. <laughs> Christian marriage is a covenant of faith and trust between a man and a woman, established within their shared commitment in the covenant of faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. Therefore, it requires both man and woman openness of life and thought, freedom from doubt and suspicion, and commitment to speak the truth in love as they grow up in Christ, who is the head of the church. Christian marriage, therefore, is a covenant of hope that endures all things in which both husband and wife commit themselves <clears throat> to interpret each other's behavior with understanding and compassion and never give up trying to communicate with each other. Christian marriage, therefore, is a covenant of love in which both husband and wife empty themselves of their own concerns and take upon themselves the concerns of each other in loving each other as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Therefore, this covenant is not to be entered into unadvisedly or lightly, but reverently, discreetly, advisedly, and soberly in the fear of God. Into this holy state, Tracy and Judith come now to be joined. I require and charge you both here in the presence of God that if either of you know any reason why you should not be united in marriage lawfully and in concordance with God's word, you do now confess. Um. If there is anyone <laughs> who has reason to believe that these two should not be joined together as husband and wife, speak now or forever hold your peace and I'll beat you later. <coughs> Judith, will you have this man, Tracy? To be your husband, to live together in the covenant of marriage as long as you live. Yes. And let us have a prayer. Father, you've created us male and female in your image. Look mercifully upon Tracy and Judith who come to, come to you seeking your blessing and assist them with your grace. That with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may honor and keep the promises and vows that they make through Jesus Christ our Savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 1 Corinthians says, and this is um, concerning um, open communion, and they've asked if you guys would like to join us with communion. Um, I've set your stuff over there on the table, the red cup and the bread. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to start with <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 11. It's 1 Corinthians 11, 27 through 32, and this is coming from the New Living Translation. It says, so if anyone eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily, that person is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. That is why we should examine ourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup unworthily, not honoring the body of Christ, you're eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. 
That's why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. But if we examine ourselves, we will not be examined by God and judged in this way. But when we are judged and disciplined by the Lord, we will not be condemned with the world. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Okay, y'all will take your bread. You want to break it? I'd like to partake with us, you know. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This is this cup is the new covenant between God and you, sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink. Father, we just love you today. Thank you, Lord, for this couple that's come before you. Lord, we do bow our hearts before you. Thank you, Lord, that all of our sins are forgiven, that from this day forward that we're in the presence of you and the newness of life that you've given us, that all of our sins are behind us, Lord, that we're forgiven for and they're covered. We thank you, Lord, from this day forward that this will be a happy marriage, be a marriage that acknowledges you in all their ways and that you'll direct their paths. In Jesus' name. Amen. Judith, submit myself to you, Tracy, before God and these witnesses. I promise to stand with you during any spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, or social need that may occur, occur during our marriage. If you stray from the Lord, I promise to win you back to the Lord by submissiveness to the Lord and to you, as long as I live. I accept the Bible as my guide to be your wife. I will be faithful to you. So we will live a long, healthy life together. I will honor you and speak respectfully to you as my husband. I promise to keep myself from ungodly casualties so my love for you will not be corrupted. I will keep my heart pure before the Lord and you. I will not panic at sudden situations beyond my control. I will take personal care of my physical body and today it belongs to you. I, Tracy, take the total responsibility as the leader of our marriage, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and socially. <clears throat> I promise to keep this union together. I take you as my wife, that my body would be, would not, would not be burned. If you stray from the Lord, I promise to win you back to the Lord by my commitment to the Lord and as your husband, as long as I live. I accept the Bible as my guide to be your husband I will be faithful to you, so we will live a long, healthy life together. I promise to love you as Jesus Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I will keep you from worldly contamination, and I choose to renew my mind with you by the word of God. I will honor you in all areas of life, so our prayers will not be hindered. I have forsaken all others to be joined with you as my wife. My body, my body now belongs to you. Do you both agree and you just say yes as if you want to say yes or say no? Do you both agree to seek the word of God to find his will for your marriage? Yes. yes. Do you both agree to have compassion towards one another? Yes. yes. To love one another till death separates you? Yes. Do you both agree to respect one another? Yes. yes. Do you agree to bless one another instead of rendering evil for evil? Yes. Do you both agree to speak pleasant words to each other? Yes. To tell the truth so you may remain free from bondage? Yes. Do you both agree to find a peaceful ending to arguments? Yes. Okay. Let me get your rings. And you're going to go to him first. Okay. And this is what you say, Tracy. Tracy. This ring is a symbol of my vow. This ring is a symbol of my vow. Okay, this is her turn. Oh. She's this talking is a, to you. You say, Tracy, yeah. 
This ring is a symbol of my vow before God. This ring is a symbol of my vow before God. And to you is your wife. And to you is your wife. Let it remind you of. Let it remind you of. My submit submissiveness. My submissiveness to you. To you. And my unending love. And my unending love. Okay. And Judith. Judith, this ring is a symbol of my vow before God. Judith, this ring is a symbol of my, my vow, vow before, before God. God. And to you is your husband. And to you is your husband. Let it remind you. Let it remind you. Of my continued provision for you. My continued provision. For you. For you. My leadership in our marriage. My leadership in our marriage. And most of all. And most of all. My unending love for you. My unending love for you. Okay, let us pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless these rings as symbols of the vows that Tracy and Judith have bound themselves to each other with. May they represent their commitment to each other as well as to God. Grant that their wills may be so knit together in your will and their spirits in your spirit that they may grow in love and peace with you and one another all the days of their life. Amen. Amen. The promises and blessings of Abraham speak in Deuteronomy 28, and it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, and if thou shalt hearken, and if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. Verse 15 says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, to observe and to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So I want you both to say, as for me and my house, as for me and my, my house, house, we will serve the Lord. We will, we will serve, serve the, the Lord. Lord. And we're gonna make another prayer of commitment. God, you've so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessings upon Tracy and Judith, your servants, as they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness, in patience, in wisdom, and true, true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God and forever. Amen. Amen. Tracy and Judith, according to the word of God, you have become one flesh. Fulfill your promises and your vows. Love and serve the Lord as well as each other all the days of your life. God has joined you two together. Do not let any man separate it. It is finished and you may kiss your bride. Mm. Ooh, I love you. <laughs> I represent to you, Mr. and Mrs. 